Hey guys, my name is Jillian and this is my first YouTube video. Nothing about this video is going to be perfect, but it is going to be raw, it is going to be real, and it's going to be me just doing what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel. So that being said, I just want to get right into the video. I'm going to do a little bit of a full day of eating and take you guys to the gym where I get a full leg glute pump workout. So if you guys like this video, please leave a like and a comment and you can subscribe for further content. Thanks. Okay, so lately I've been on a huge Super Beats craze. I drink this every morning before my meals. So the benefit of this is the nitric oxide production. It's supposed to help improve natural energy and stamina and promote healthy circulation throughout the body in general. It's also super high in potassium and so is coconut water. So the two together go great and I just really love the taste to be honest. Like despite everything, I do feel really awake after I drink it. But this flavor combo is so epic with the coconut water. I literally only drink black coffee and tea and water and those are my staples. I don't really like to drink my calories, but this really does it for me. Okay, so moving on to breakfast, I'm hitting you with like the most basic meal because I'm going to be honest, it's like 1pm at this point and I have to be at the gym by 2. So I had to eat something that would digest super fast and not weigh me down. Also, I would typically like to eat something a little bit more calorie dense, a little bit more filling before a leg day, but a bitch was late. So this is what we got to work with. I cut up uh, four strawberries, I think. Next, I'm going to take some toast. I use this bread from Trader Joe's. It's a sourdough bread. The way sourdough is made, it digests a little bit better in your stomach as opposed to white bread. So that's why I choose that. Next, we got some egg whites, and I take one whole egg just for the added nutrients. Egg whites are great because they're high in protein, low calorie. But if you want to get all the added vitamins and minerals, you're better off going with at least one yolk. Okay, and then I sprayed the pan and I added pepper, garlic, and that was it. Sometimes if I'm feeling it, I'll add some onion or some sriracha, whatever. But like I said, I need to move fast, so I just made it super, super basic. Okay, also I like a runny yolk, so I totally should have cooked the egg whites and the eggs separate, but you live and you learn, and sometimes you realize too late. So that is meal number one, and now I'm just going to eat this, and then I will catch you guys at the gym. Alrighty guys, so now we're at the gym, and the first thing I do whenever I have a leg workout is roll the fuck out. Um, I emphasize my hips, my glutes, my quads, and my back, especially the lower back. That is going to get tight. You can roll out your hamstrings too. I don't really find I can get in there good enough, so I might stretch a little bit. Um, before but that's what I focus on I spend a good deal of time rolling out maybe 10 minutes 10 15 minutes and then I move into my glute activation exercises don't sleep on your warm-up guys I know you people are out there and you go into the gym and you're not rolling out and you're not warming up before you work out but this will help prevent injuries and it helps get the whole body moving and ready to go so Please do them, don't skip them, they are important. So for my glute activation, I'm doing banded walks. I just walk back and forth until I just start getting a severe cramp in my glutes. Shout out Des, cause he forced me to do these and now I can't stop. And now I'm doing banded squats and I'm gonna do about 15 to 20 reps of these and I repeat my activation two times. Okay, so our first exercise is going to be hip thrusts. I always start off with a warm-up set before I do any compound lift. This is just to get your body used to the movement, adjust any um, technique errors and stuff like that. So the first thing that I do is I adjust my feet. If your feet are too far away from your glutes, you might feel it more in your hamstrings. And if your feet are too close to your glutes, more pulled back, you might feel it more in your quads. I keep the bottom of my shoulder blades in line with the bench behind me and I start the movement from the bottom. So when you're driving up, 
a good thing to keep in mind is to scoop your glutes and achieve a posterior tilt in your pelvis. So think of the scoop instead of an up and down rigid motion and that might help you engage your glutes and your core a lot better and keep your posture right. Another thing is to keep your chin tucked and your gaze forward. And if you're still not feeling it, you may want to slow down a bit. Take your time, pause at the top, get a booty band, and focus on driving your knees outward. This will really, really help engage it, guys. So right here, I'm actually doing dead stops, which is when you stop at the bottom of a hip thrust reset. It just allows for even higher glute recruitment, increased range of motion. It's better for heavier weight and I have been dying from these lately. So the next exercise is going to be squats. This is another one. You're going to see a common theme in playing around with your foot positioning and feeling what works best for you and your body type, your anatomy. That's just the name of the game with compounds. Um, so... I prefer more of a shoulder width stance with my toes slightly outward. I have really short legs and a long torso. I find this stance works best for me to feel my glutes engage. I know a lot of people like a sumo squat, which is a wider than shoulder width stance with their toes pointed out and it allows them to get deeper. Again, this is another exercise where it's great to add a band around your knees to push your knees outward and don't let them cave inwards and to recruit more of the glute muscle. Sometimes I play around with my foot positioning a little bit too much and I get in my head about it, but it's really important because if my feet aren't lined upright, then I drive down and I don't feel the connection in my glutes and I it just feels off for me so my feet matter so much to me in all my leg compound movements. I think a huge mistake that I and a lot of beginners make is that they stick their booty out when they go down in a squat. So that's going to actually create an anterior pelvic tilt and a curvature in the lower spine which we don't want. You want to keep the spine neutral guys so at the top of the movement before you go down think about scooping your glutes a little bit inwards not a major scoop just slightly inwards so that when you go down you're not sticking it out and creating a huge curve in this bottom of your spine i prefer to keep the tension in my glutes when i squat rather than a full squeeze at the top i just find if you tell a beginner to squeeze at the top they're going to overextend, they're going to break their form, and it just causes more room for error and injury. Alright, so now let's get into the lunges. So for lunges, you want to make sure that you're driving with the forward foot, and the back foot is just there for support. Don't push off with your back foot. Let it be a supporter. Let your forward foot be the main character in this role. I always make sure to have at least one unilateral or single leg exercise in my leg days this will help work out any imbalances and to help you strengthen that weaker leg and once again you want to keep your hips and your spine in line you'll notice i focus primarily on compound movements so movements that recruit more than one muscle group these are going to be your building blocks to gaining muscle to strengthening and growing so compounds 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 till you die you can only do so many booty band and accessory work before your glutes aren't going to grow anymore. Okay, so to end this workout, we are going to do a hip abduction drop set. I love drop setting on this machine. I just feel like it allows every aspect of my glute to fire up. So a drop set, you're going to start with a heavy weight. I do 10 reps, then I lower the weight, I do 15 reps, and I lower it one more time, and I do 20 reps. So you're starting with a heavy weight, switching to a lower weight while increasing the reps for each set. So I do all three of them back to back, and then I rest for a minute. I haven't been on this machine in months guys, so I'm still kind of adjusting a little bit with my positioning and everything. 
but I find when I go heavier, I like to lean forward. I still have to try and keep a neutral pelvis in order to engage the glutes properly and not hurt my, your lower back, but I like to lean forward for heavier ones and push off with my heels. And then right here, I'm doing more moderate lighter weight and I stay more centered. We just did three really taxing compound movements. So I'm finishing off on this machine to isolate the glutes and really burn them out at the end of my workout. Okay, so when I got home, I was starving and I had to whip up this shake. This is my post-workout shake. Um, I just add coconut water or water depending on the day, two scoops of chocolate orgain protein, which is a vegan protein, and I add one to two scoops of naked PB. I didn't really eat that much today, so two scoops was needed, and then I just blend that all together with a banana. I add some ice and some vanilla and cinnamon, and that is it, guys. I'm just going to finish making the shake, and then I'll see you guys again at dinner. So this is what's on my plate. Uh, we have boneless, skinless chicken thighs, sweet potatoes, salad, roasted peppers. This plate, let me tell you, the sweet potato portion doubled and I added another two ounces of chicken, a little bit more salad, probably went in for some more peppers. I was so starving at this point. Like I said, it was my own fault. I should have eaten more throughout the day, but I was adjusting to a new school schedule. I was late for the gym, so my own fault. I don't like to have to eat this much at dinner, but sometimes it happens. My mom made this meal, so there's definitely marinade, dressing, and oils that I have to remember when I am tracking my calories, so it's not going to be a 100% accurate meal. So that is it. I would usually like to have a little bit of dessert, but I had to be up early, and I ate so much at dinner, so I'm capping it with some lemon ginger tea to help with my digestion. And that is it guys, I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you thought of this video. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys again.